Hello and welcome to the first Sheboygan Police Department roll call. I'm going to be your moderator for today. I'm Officer Matthew Friedel with the Sheboygan Police Department. we got a lot to talk about today. We're going to kind of do an introduction of what the roll call podcast is all about. Before I get into who's all sitting at the table right now, uh, I want to talk a little about what a roll call is for the Sheboygan Police Department, what we do. You know, every shift or every tour, we have to go to a roll call for about 20 minutes in the, I guess you would call it the roll call room. Yep. Uh, yep. Cool. Sounds good. Um, <laughs> uh, pretty much all it is, is, you know, is our sergeants, our lieutenants, they go up in front for about 20 minutes. They talk to us about, you know, who we're looking for, what we really need to be focusing on, and just general crime updates of, for the day. And it's just where we get our information as police officers to take us over for what's going on when we get on the road. Uh, so that's kind of the concept of what the roll call show is all about, if you will. But before we get into it, I just want to set the table, let you know who's in the room right now. Uh, directed to my right is Officer Bob Erickson. Hi, Bob. Matt. How you doing, Bob? That's the high wit energy you're going to get out of this show. Conversation <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> next to Bob is Officer Ryan Schmidt. Hi, Matt. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> and next to Ryan Schmidt is Officer Tom Anker. Tom? Hey, how are you guys doing? We are doing good. Uh, <laughs> I want to stress before we get into this is that um, clearly you can tell at this point we are not professional broadcasters. Um, we're going to try to do as limited editing as we can. Uh, you're going to hear ahs, you're going to hear ums, you're going to hear silence. You're going to hear laughing. <laughs> you're going to hear laughing. But um, the whole purpose of this is uh get you as much information as we can. Uh, my whole concept of this was essentially, I guess I understand as a father as well as, you know, husband, how life can get really busy. So the whole purpose of this podcast is, you know, just to listen to it whenever you have time on your own. Uh, I came up with this just, you know, when I'm at home, usually if the television is playing SpongeBob SquarePants or Doc McStuffins, I don't really have time to watch the news or much else even have time to go to a neighborhood meeting. Um, so I just came up with this idea of maybe just doing a podcast. I know when I'm driving in my car or my squad, I listen to uh, podcasts over my iPod. And, you know, it had to be a news or a comedy podcast, and I like them both. So I just thought, why not use this technology for the Sheboygan Police Department? So after coming up with the idea for the Roll Call podcast, I, I, I kind of wanted to turn to someone. I knew, Ryan, you were really good with technology for the police department. You really helped us out, and I kind of talked to you about it, what I wanted to do. Yep, and it, and Matt, we brought this up at first. I thought you're, I don't want to say crazy, but um, the more I thought about it, the more it's a, it's a great idea. Uh, and we had talked about we have neighborhood meetings, and a lot of times people can't make those meetings, um, or for whatever reason it may be. And it's tough to stay updated in information when you are working or have children. Um, it just doesn't. It's not something that's feasible sometimes. So we want to try and find that missing demographic of people, then try and get information out there. It's an easy way for something to get out there, uh, whatever it may be, uh, crime updates concept, just simple questions that people want answered sometimes. I think it's a really great idea. I agree. <laughs> no, no. Um, no, that's exactly what it was. You know, it was, it's, it's pretty much just a, another tool for citizens of Sheboygan that, again, like Ryan said, we can't reach any, you know, every demographic with these neighborhood beings. I mean, if, if I wasn't a police officer, I have a, you know, if I'm working, I used to work at Kohler Company, you know, I've got a wife, I've got a kid, I've got, these kids have to go to school, they've got to have you know, football practice, whatnot. You know, yeah. I don't have time to cut my lawn, much less go to a neighborhood meeting. And it's it's tough yeah. for everybody. I mean, the police department has a website, which is fantastic. There's a lot of information there. It's SheboyganPolice.com. Um, if you go there, it's a lot of great things. But the thing we kind of ran into with that is, unfortunately, it takes quite a bit of manpower or, <clears throat> or time to to keep things updated. And it's tough to get some information out there when it's something that doesn't isn't a big thing. Sometimes for us, it may seem like a big thing. For others, it may not be. So we wanted to find somewhere else to kind of get information out there. There's, of course, the, the media, uh, which I'm sure everybody knows about, to get the bigger things out there. But sometimes there are smaller things we want to get out also. And this is an easy way to sure. listen to it, um, hopefully not intrusive, but, and uh, something that's kind of meant to be fun. Right. Absolutely. I think, uh, I think that also goes into the roll call uses. You know, what we're, what we're trying to use this for is to communicate with the public. I mean, this is something that 
you know, I thought was an excellent idea when Matt brought it up. Uh, you know, great way to communicate with the public, get out what so, we're trying please. to accomplish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matt. <laughs> so, you know, this is just something that it it's a great way to communicate with you guys um, so that we can get, you know, all the information out, what we're trying to accomplish so that we can get this, you know, neighborhood policing, you know, cooperation, okay? so that we can do our jobs and you guys can help us out with it also. So we can have a safer city and, you know, keep property values up and have a good life. And a couple of things I want to point out, too, about this. You know, as you can tell by now, we're obviously not politicians. We're obviously not administrators or supervisors. We are average road cops who you are going to see driving around every day. Um, and this is a way for average cops to talk to average people. Um, there, you've probably heard by now that uh, we're a department that has shifted to a community policing, a neighborhood policing, and a problem-oriented policing model. And we're going to tell you what that's going to look like. We're not going to exactly. use the big words that the criminal justice mm-hmm. doctorates are using out there. We're going to tell you as a citizen, how does that change our service to you? How does that change your responsibilities to yourselves and your neighbors? And what, what is it going to look like? Why are you seeing cops walking around instead of driving around now? Why, do you, why are you seeing cops going out with building inspectors instead of running radar all the time? Right. This is our way to tell you in plain English what you're going to see, why you're going to see it, and hopefully as this goes along for the citizens to communicate back to the average Joe Road cops to say, hey, why is this going on, or ask questions that maybe you don't want to email the chief about. Exactly. It's kind of an interesting thing you bring up, but mm-hmm. why, are, why are police officers using other means by, like, foot? I had somebody come up and ask, why, why do the police have, I always see the police cars with bikes on the back. Where, why do you guys have so many abandoned bikes? That, that isn't the case. We're using the bikes now to be on our bike patrol, but people just aren't used to that because they just don't know. That's all. Yeah. And not the abandoned bikes that we're using. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree. And, you know, and also, you know, as a police department, I, I'm happy to see that we're using new social media tools like this to get in touch with, you know, normally it was, like a radio show or maybe like a public service announcement or even, you know, our Facebook or Twitter. But, yeah. you know, hopefully this is just another tool for people to utilize. And I think you know, we talked about the missing demographic of kind of the people at our age, our age for lack of a better term. I mean, everybody's got a, a phone that can play play audio. Um, this is an easy way to get something on there and play it whenever it's convenient for you. Right. Or you don't have to tune in at a certain time. Or jump, on the, jump on the computer and play it that way also. Yep. Yeah. You can do all your work at all, and give you... <laughs> I can give you more talks and <laughs> come on, guys, do more push-ups. Let's do this. All right, I'm gonna not shift gears. I mean, we've been talking about community policing throughout this roll call already, but you know, really as a department, community policing is one of our main priorities. Uh, I'm gonna read right now what the Sporting Police Department's community policing philosophy is. Community policing is a philosophy that promotes organizational strategies which support the systematic use of partnerships and problem-solving techniques to proactively address the immediate condition that give rise to public safety issues such as crime, social disorder, and the fear of crime. Tom, explain. (laughs) I'm kidding. I don't know if I'm going to put you on the spot. (laughs) But really, I mean, what neighborhoods? (laughs) What are we even talking about neighborhoods? I don't even... I don't even know if, if every citizen in this town realizes that your house lies in the neighborhood. Yeah, Yeah. basically, uh, chiming in here, when I started working here four and a half years ago, our, our patrol and policing strategy was completely different than it is now. Um, I think we've changed for the better, not to say that back then we were slack, and I think we've, we've progressed, and naturally that's the right thing to do. When I started working here, we had three what we called patrol districts. We had 4-6, which was everything south of Indiana Avenue, we had 2-5, which was everything between Indiana Avenue and Superior Avenue. And then we had 3-7, which was everything north of Superior. The numbers in the districts didn't really matter. Those were all left over from patrol areas from before when I even started here. Um, the problem with that is those are really, really big areas. And when you think about it, if you look at 4-6, which is what I used to patrol, um, the problems with business, business over, businesses over by Walmart and Starbucks and... Uh, cruisers over at uh, Washington Taylor were a lot different than the problems faced by citizens that live over by Longfellow School at 7th right. Kentucky. Yeah. So what we did was we further divided these districts into neighborhoods uh, with the intent that certain officers would have to keep track of what was going on in certain neighborhoods. And uh, you'll see that the neighborhood sizes are considerably smaller. For instance, Erie Hill is a neighborhood. 
And that's basically off the top of my head, everything from Erie Avenue up to, I believe, Fury Avenue between, like, 14th Street and 17th Street. Obviously a lot smaller than the entire district of 25. We do that because, obviously, there's its own specific problems in that own specific neighborhood. Which holds officers responsible, too, for that neighborhood. Exactly. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. now it's not just the Wild West, not that there's anything wrong with, you know, the old policing, but now it's, you know, officers... You're responsible for that neighborhood. You know, we are all responsible. Everyone in this room that you're hearing all have individual neighborhoods. Yeah. And part of when that, when that comes up, those officers, they, they're able to spend time focusing on those neighborhoods so there's a better understanding of what's going on. They, they know what it is. They're not going to... If somebody calls the police and asks for an officer, they're not going to get a different officer every time. More than likely, unless it's an emergency, they're going to get the same officer over and over again, and they're going to get the response that they expect that they were told they were going to get by that same officer the last time. Exactly. You know, you're not kicking the can down the road uh, for three months because you get a new officer every time you call. If you're able to come to a certain house four times, the fourth time you get there, if you're the same officer that's been dealing with them, you know you're more intimate with it. You know, well, you know exactly the history. what's going on. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right, exactly. And the other thing, it allows you to specialize a lot more, I think. A lot of my neighborhoods are apartment complexes or businesses, mm -hmm. which is they both have their own unique set of circumstances. I am able, you know, I've had to do plenty of research on things like retail theft and landlord-tenant issues. Now, there's some officers that have more residential areas. Their, their problems that they're encountering are different. This is a good thing because it allows me to use the research I have done to apply to my regular on the road patrol activities. And the other officer that's usually in the uh, suburban people own their houses kind of areas can apply what they have learned in their research to what they do as well. On the flip side, though, you can help, you know, as Sheboygan expands and we got businesses popping up everywhere, then you can help out other officers as well with, you know, their sure. growing districts and sure. such. Yeah, exactly. So I agree. Yeah. I think it's right on. Right on. What am I? <laughs> we, keep throwing, we keep throwing the term neighborhoods out there and the city went through a, the city or some representative went through and they kind of divided the city up geographically and they set these kind of boundaries and Bob had kind of touched on Erie Hill which is actually one of my neighborhoods along with Matt mm. um, that is 14th Street to basically the railroad tracks and Superior to Erie well somebody on the other side of, uh, of Superior Avenue may feel more connected to the Erie Hill neighborhood than where they're at and so that really those those